Okay, so do we want to start with like just the first option of increasing yeah. the number of dealers? So I can basically just like go through what I put and we can see if like there's anything else we need to add. Okay. So I basically said that first of all, like adding a hundred new dealers is in one year is probably very unrealistic because they added 50 over the past 10 years, so that's... And that's in the book, right? Right, it tells you that in the case. Yeah. And so adding 100 in one year is gonna be very difficult. And then, um, obviously, if that even was possible, they're gonna need to add a lot more salespeople to account for all of those. And so I did the calculation for like how many salespeople they would need to add with having 400 independent dealers instead of 300, and it says they call them two times per month, so 24 times a year. And that's and, table B1? Yeah. Okay. And so it doesn't say how many, how long they spend on each call or how many like average working hours they spend on it in a year, so I kind of just made an estimated guess on those, which gives us that they would need 14 salespeople and they currently have eight, so that means an increase of six salespeople. Um, at $80,000. At $80,000 wow. each, which is an additional $480,000 a year just to add those salespeople. So that's a really large cost, right. obviously. Yeah. And so like in the table that compares them all in A1, you can see that like their net profit decreases a lot because of that added cost. Like yes, their net sales goes up a little bit from adding those 100 dealers um, to like over 10 million, but you have that such a that large cost that their net profit actually is lower than what they had in 2005. Yeah. And so, like, Sorry, quick question. Yeah. Where is the net sale, where does the net sales for adding 100 dealers come from in that? It comes from the 50 exclusive times the number, average number an exclusive dealer is going to make in 2006 plus 400 independent times how much an independent, average independent would make from the table. Oh, 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 sorry. I thought those were like okay. the 2005 numbers and I was like, conf okay, no, the, that's, the the, left. that's the potential 2006 yeah. if we go back. Just the left column okay. is 2005 and then all the other four are for 2006. The dealer. Yeah. And so obviously should that's... We, should we put more of a split in that so it's easier to read then? Right in the center? Uh, which one? Of table A3. Oh, oh, I see you're saying on that one. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we could, or like, make that line, make Cause it... Because I, yeah. Bold. I think yeah. we could do that. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Where is this at? It's table A3. I was looking at Because I wasn't even, I didn't even read those yeah. two titles separately. I read the information first and then I realized yeah. that they were separate. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And it's just like adding the 2.4% increase on the right. Okay. And so, obviously, right now, adding 100 dealers in one year, the cost is not going to be worth like yeah they're getting more net sales it's still not to the 12.5 million that they want but adding those sales people is such a large cost especially when you don't even you're not even able to add that many right that's dealerships. like it's in just one year it's just under it's, so in the long it could be run, possible in the long run adding like, some in the long run and slowly adding sales people might later but for right now that's obviously not, not the best be. option for them to try to reach their sales goal and still have a decent net profit. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. So do we think there's anything else we need to discuss in that? To add in that, I mean, that's basically what I had. I'm just trying to make sure there's nothing and else. I also said there. that we don't believe like the increase in the marketing budget would affect it like would increase their sales any like enough to, to cover to that. cover the difference of the salespeople and the fact that they're not even at the twelve point five million. And so that there's no way that Oh well, they state where they want to put that twenty percent right it's like at the top. They want it to get it to be the top one hundred current what that's top one hundred so the fifty exclusive and then and the then top the yes. top okay, that's 50 what I thought. right. Oh, yeah. Right. So only the top 
so that hunter they add that none of those might not be getting the additional they're not going to be a top performer right away right exactly right like well i doubt it i shouldn't say they're not but like most likely they're not going to be not going to open a new store and then all of a sudden beat out right so, so none good. of them are even going to be getting the advertising no, i think all exclusive and then only 16 percent independent too yeah so no, maybe a lot of them but not 2006 right so i think we're pretty good for that one on that section okay yeah i looked into the reduction of dealerships okay which is the third, the third option one. and the main thing that like i talked about sorry i'm just like peeking at this um they would be reducing from 300 independents to the 200 right independent and then the 50 um exclusive or whatever would stay the same like they wouldn't really be affected by the reduction unless they would like get more sales from one of the closest stores closing but that's just kind of hard to just guess on because they really didn't talk about that at all in the case but with that in the thing they like said how the execs had like three arguments just saying how they didn't want to have the franchise program just because it it's already 70 percent of sales they were like we don't need it there necessarily and then the other part that they were trying to say is that limiting flexibility in the future being stuck just like with your franchise program and not in like the smaller whatever's and then the last one that they talked about which i actually like, did like stuff on was talking about like how the sales reps would have more time to spend for each rep which i guess all three of their points like are valid like that they're not wrong by any of that if you like look at the sales reps and table da, 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 da. i saw that you made that table and it showed i, I what, think D3? that was a good one uh yeah it yeah. was d3 yeah so in 2005 it's just like it i broke it down by executives and independents and then 2006 proposal option three executives and independents keeping the sales reps the same two and eight and then it just like shows how with the 50 dealers in executive in 2005 they'd have 25 dealers per rep where the independents in 2005 have 37.5. So with the reduction, the only change would be they'd have 25 instead of 30. To have 25 instead of 37 per dealers, which yeah, you would have more time to spend with people. So like that does look good and like beneficial. Mm -hmm. but, but then is that more time that they're gonna have per dealer gonna make up for the reduction of all of those yes. Dealerships. Yeah, so that when you like look and then I like I talked about so I had like a big chunk about the sales because like you could really like talk about that. It wasn't just kind of like, oh, it's better kind of stuff. Right. But then I talked about the sales and I thought like for the sales, it's unrealistic. So the 50 exclusive dealers have that 6 million, like 6.6 .6 million pretty much. Right. But then with the new goal of 12.5 million, when you subtract that from it, you have like 5.9 million pretty much and when dividing that by 200 the per dealer is like oh, thirty thousand dollars which is three times what the projected which is. the projected is nine thousand four hundred and twenty one which is three point one three times more than the projected sales are like saying already which even if you would put that 20 percent marketing budget on towards those or yeah. towards the top 50 of the 200 now it still is yeah. so unrealistic to triple your sales by 3% in one year when the industry itself is only supposed to go up by 2.4%. Right. So and yeah, like yeah. the extra time that they're going to be spending on each dealer, I still don't think it's going to make up for that large of an increase. No. Like having it's, more time dedicated to each dealer might be beneficial to that dealer's sales, but if they're trying to reach $12.5 million, reducing your number of dealers is not going to get you there I completely in one it, like anywhere short term yeah it's 12.5 yeah. less dealers than you had before right which, so that's going to give them more time but not anything crazy it's not like it's not going to triple their sales no it's not going to triple their sales no not at all so like that is the most like unrealistic which like we talked about before like in the long run could you possibly if you slowly did it and slowly build it up your ones you do have and reduce your ones that maybe aren't doing as well yeah and get those sales up then maybe like very long term it's too dramatic do it but not cutting a hundred at one time that's so much of your sales it's too dramatic and to me if they're really nervous or like concerned about not having enough people 
to like service the dealers enough, then like they need to like take that in with like hiring reps for different types of things. Right. Like if that's there's not enough information to like say adding a sales rep would add this much more like utility to the dealer. Like right. if there it, it isn't stated, but short run definitely, definitely not, not in my opinion. The three point one three times the projected sales. I just like it's just yeah, there's no way the independent dealers are going to be able to make that much because that would require them to be out of the three because it said like the top of independent dealers like the top ones about 60 percent yeah and the middle ones 30 and the lower ones 10 well we found calculated that we're probably in that three. lowest like we're third, in the third. Um, third brand so for them to get to like 30,000 sales they're gonna have to be one of those higher brands, and that's gonna take a lot more than just having dealers <coughs> spend a little bit more time. On I could be like completely trip. wrong in what I'm about to like ask and like say, which is, that's great to like say right there, right? <laughs> but um, so like the dealer's projected sales, we came up that nine thousand four hundred twenty-one. Right for two thousand six. For two thousand six, is that includes the two point four percent increase? Yes. yes. So that's just. No, it's too, I'm sorry. Okay. I was like thinking in my head and then it just, it, it's not gonna make sense no matter what I say, it, so we're good. Okay. <laughs> Which chart are you looking at? Um, I'm looking, right now I'm looking at D1. Which is a part of yours, right? You're right. All D? Yeah. Option three is yeah. all of D. Okay. Yeah. So option three just really any it's just time not, and like you can even like look at like the income statement for option three and like You're it's not. not doing it. <laughs> no. Not at all. It it's like net profit is similar to adding the hundred dealers, but <laughs> their net sales is way lower. Yeah. They just don't have the expense of and technically, I guess they could reduce their expense and reduce the number of sales reps that they That's have. what I was just thinking in my head. Like, if they would really get rid of one-third of this, would they get rid of one-third of their independent sales but reps? Getting rid of that $80,000 times a couple people is still not going to make up for how much money they need. And I don't think they wanted to do that anyways because no. they said they, they were like, it's time. going, it says, the thir and third, an improvement in sales force effort and possibly increased sales might result if more time were given to fewer dealers. Right, so I don't, that's not what they wanted to do, so yeah, that would save Which you a little cool. bit of money, but yeah. Yeah, well, I think option three is bad too. Yeah. Okay, so do we want to talk, move on to the last option before no change then? Do we want to talk about no change first or the, the franchise? The franchising. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, franchise first. Okay. So, good old franchising. <laughs> I, I moved it to the top to just be, or not, I moved um, it to like in order of like option one, option yeah. two, just because we had an appendix uh, that way. So I felt like it made it flow better if it was in the I order. honestly, when I like formatted like the outline of that paper, of like our paper, it was just like throwing it out there so like we could visualize it. Um, okay. Nothing okay. was set in stone or like. Not offended, I promise. Did we come up with any negatives to this option? Um, I mean, they said in option three that they didn't want to be limited, but I don't really think that, like, the only limitation is that in the, is what in the markets that have right. the exclusive ones, they can't, there's only one dealer in that market. That's really the only mm -hmm. limitation is that they're not adding any more dealers in that market. But if those are 70% of their sales, then it's like, do you really need any other dealers? Right, and there's not much room to expand anyways. Right. The only thing, like, she said in class, like, are your customers going to want to drive, like, depending on, like, how big the market is, if that's the only one in that market, who is it going to be around? But we don't really know any of that information. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, it, nothing in the survey, I don't think. Like, no, it's not in the survey. Nothing <coughs> in this area really at all, like, the one with you know Dallas and the surrounding area in the previous case. How long the video is right now? Right. I know. I know. I'm worried we're not no, all going to get I, our. That's what I was. I, just that's thinking. why I was saying we should move on, but I think we might already be over. That's all right. I, I, 
can't even see the number. I don't think it's showing. Yeah, I don't think it's it at the top. Okay, I'll go up and peek at it. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm so blind. Sorry, I'm so blind. Sorry, Dr. <laughs> We're at 15 minutes right now. Right now? And yeah. we haven't even talked about the other, the last two options. Well, let's just keep going. Okay. I mean, there's she no said point max, starting right? over. She said max 15. No. Okay, well, we will have to learn how to cut it. I said we just keep going, work about later. Okay. There's no well, I think we should talk about then the other two, not the group problem. Right. So like the no change and the 20%. Okay. Right, yeah. All right. You don't want to discuss what we're going to go with at all? I think, I think we, we should, should start with you yeah. guys. Yeah. Go ahead. So. Okay. Well, now I, feel, oh, I don't know. So for the no change option, which is the last option, I mean, just reading it, it's easy to see that it doesn't seem like it's that great of an idea at all. Basically, the only benefits are that there's no reallocation of current dollars, so they're not wasting any time, uh, any time coming up with new strategies and um, where to put their money. Um, and then there's no time restriction of waiting on the new strategy to have um, more profitability. And then um, the cons are that the current strategies clearly aren't working or they wouldn't be discussing it anyways. And then they have such a big increase in their goal um, that it just seems unrealistic to to really change, like, alter the current strategies that much to get a 36% increase from last year. So, right. it, I mean, it's basically just not even an option because of like how simple it is. Increasing their average, 20% of their marketing budget isn't gonna, like, increase their sales increase by that much. Their sales right. By 36% <laughs> if right. they're not changing anything. And, like, I put it into the income statement, like, side by side, and they're net. Uh, profit like minutes. goes up a little bit, but their net <coughs> isn't even like barely goes up at all. Only two hundred thousand. Yeah. And so there's just like they have to change something they, if they want to increase their sales by the, and reach the goal. Right. There, there just, just has to be a change. There's no way to keep the current strategies because it's not working for their goals. Their goals are too big for it. Right. They either need to change their, <laughs> their goals, goals to something more realistic. Right. Right. <laughs> Which would be it's like, way less than come up with thirty whatever percent goal. Like, it, like they why just literally is their goal threw it out there. It seems like thirty six percent. Richard Holly. <laughs> All right, so, okay. so you need to do something. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Basically. Okay. So they originally proposed twenty percent marketing increase that was going to go to the highest potential markets currently and we decided that we wanted to go with the future hundred highest and we think that's going to be in the independent market and then in the tables a5 um, let me go down there um, the total sale for pyramid right now is 9.2 million and we multiply that by 30 percent so annually they're making around 2.8 million and there's a hundred or sorry, three hundred independent dealers currently. So they're making about ninety two hundred annually. Excuse me. And then in table A six, is that the one? Yeah, it just yeah. shows it the same thing but for the exclusive. Right. So basically what we were trying to prove is that there's a lot of potential in the independent market that we are missing out on. What percent did I say? I don't see it right now. Where's the table with the manufacturer thing? Uh, is it an A? I thought so. But anyways, you guys know, like, the top performing brand was like 60% of sales, and the second was like 30, oh, and then 10. Oh. And so the 9200 was below the oh, third. It's A4. Oh, okay. And so... A4. Oh, okay. A4. I was like looking at the right side oh, columns. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so our annual sales are lower than the third brand, which is 10% of the market. So if we can increase our marketing, marketing towards this, we can increase our brand exposure. So we think that that has the highest potential. Yep. So basically we just, mm -hmm. instead of focusing on any exclusive, that we just take the hundred top. Right. So we, we're taking like, I'm trying to think. Because remember this. we were saying people who go to the exclusive stores, they have a need. So you don't really need to market towards them as much. And the, oh yeah, we get yes, all yes, of our yes, products. You know. That's the only their choice is the pyramid door products in that store. But when you go to our exclusive right. store, like 
you're going to get our yeah, you already know. Star. It's right. not like you right. have to make a decision between different brands. Different brands. So they right. need less and they don't know brand anyways from the survey you can tell that they don't they have no brand awareness. Right. right. So you have so to sell them on the price, the quality, the So yeah. that right. and that twenty percent should be more focused on like the dealer marketing, not consumer marketing, because only 10% of them even mm -hmm. knew a brand. So yeah. it needs to be focused more on training the people and having displays and stuff to advertise Pyramid Doors brand. In the store. In the store right. over other brands. I was going to say, you can ask it. Most people, I feel like you'd be like, oh, what's a garage door brand? Like, even, like, with us? Like, no one's like Nobody right. knows. <laughs> so having a Look commercial for, like, it's not, if they don't know where those brands are, like, sold, that's not going to do any good. Yeah. It's more about selling the quality, the type, like that kind of stuff. Because it said in the survey that the things they cared about was like price, I quality, know. reliability of installer. You have that in here. I read that. Yeah, I put it in a chart. So, right. It's like they don't care about the brand name. Mm -hmm. So they can have their minds easily changed once they're in the store. Right. Yeah. So as long as you have advertising. That 20% right. marketing budget needs to be more focused on I that guess, aspect. Yeah, for sure. And it doesn't, like as much on exclusive. Sounds good. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Alright. And it, you can stop it I think. And it doesn't say it has to be a minimum okay. or a maximum of fifteen. It just says a fifteen minute video. Yeah.